Welcome to this video. Today we're going to talk through data exchange definitions and uh, we're going to focus particularly on the bank statement import type of data exchange definition. Um, so what is a data exchange definition in BC? Well, it's basically a tool that we can use to import or export data out from Business Central or into Business Central. Um, and there's a few tools that Microsoft have uh, introduced to make life easier when setting up a new data exchange definition. So what I'm going to do is just talk you through this. So I'm going to come up here to the search function on my demonstration environment and I'm going to type in assisted setup. And one of the tools that we have here available to us is the line under the get ready for business area called set up a bank statement file import format. Now we can set up a data exchange definition manually ourselves, um, but this wizard allows us to import a file which we've exported from our banking platform um, and we can import that into BC just to set up the data exchange definition for our bank statement import. Um, so if I go into this, it just opens up a wizard um, where it tells us that we can import a bank statement file to use within the Business Central environment. So now let me say next and I'm going to upload a bank statement file. So let me just go upload but before we upload I'm just going to open this Excel file here and just talk you through the sample bank statement that I have here. So it's a really simple bank statement CSV file um, and what I've done is I've numbered the columns here 1 to 13. I've got some column headings here and then I've got some data. Um, so key fields here I've got things like the entry date of my transaction, I've got the amount, I've got the description and then there are some other fields that I might want to import in as well. But let me close this down and what I'm going to do is just import that file by dragging it above the um, drop down box there. Um, so it tells me the bank statement file was successfully uploaded. I can go next and here we have a function that tells us how many header lines we want to skip on the file. So this is quite important. If I open the file up again just to show you guys, you can see here I've got a header column here. Um, well, I've actually got two header columns that I want to skip. I've just put this one in so we can see the number of the columns um, that we've got on our file here. Typically the file would start here and the data would then be underneath. Um, so in this particular example, I'm going to say that we've got two header lines that we wish to skip. So just going to change that to two. And what you can see here is if I scroll down a little bit, we've got the file preview. So I've got my first column, I've got my second column, and then I've got my data starting in the third column. So let me go next and we've then got some configuration which we're doing. Um, so BC is um, picking up here that it's a comma separated file and there's 13 columns and it's got the line separator here as well. So this has all been picked up because of the file that we've imported but we can change this information here if we need to. So I'm just going to press next and you can see here that BC is also picking up correctly here the date column number, the amount column number and the description column number. So if I go back to my file here we can see that the date is correctly in column number 7, the amount is in 9 and the description is in 13. 
So we can change this information here if I want to. For example, if I change the description column here to 12, we can see that the description changes below there. If I change it back to 13, we can see that it updates live on screen for us here. So it's just about picking the right information that we want to import into Business Central. And here we've picked the date, the amount and the description column. So let me go next and we've got the date format, which again has been predefined for us. Um, it's basically saying two characters for the date, um, two for the month and two for the year, uh, four for the year there, sorry. So we can also put in a decimal separator here so you can choose um, out of dot or comma here. And obviously in, um, in Europe or um, some other places we might have a comma as the decimal separator, but I'm gonna go with dot here. So let's go next. And um, what we then have is a page where we can try out our bank statement. So I can say test the bank statement file format here. And what it does is it brings up a page here where it gives me a preview of my bank statement. So I can see I've got the date, I've got some transaction amounts, and I've got my description, which all seems to match the file that we showed earlier. So I'll just quickly flash that up. So we've got our entry dates, we've got our amounts, and we've got our descriptions. So I'm going to hit close. I'm going to say next. And we are more or less done now. Um, so BC is just asking, what is the code which you want to name this particular format? So I'm going to call it Lloyd's. And then it tells me um, which bank account do you want to apply this import format to? So I'm going to drill down and I'm going to select my Lloyd's bank account here. So let's go finish and away we go. So we're taken back to the assisted setup page right now. And what has BC done in the background? Well, it's set up what we call a data exchange definition, as I mentioned at the top of the video. So I'm just gonna hit search and go for my data exchange definitions page. And here is the data exchange definition, which was just set up on the wizard. So there are a number of bits of configuration which BC has input. So um, it's a type of bank statement import. And you can see here, we've got a number of other different imports and exports available to us. We'll do some other videos on those. Um, we've got a few code units here. Um, to do some validation. We've got the header lines, which there's two um, that, that we need to skip. Um, so coming to the bottom part of the page here first, we've got the columns that are included within the data exchange definition. So it's just the three here, but if we wanted to add more columns, we can very simply add those columns in here. And also in the line definitions area, we've got a single line for detail but you can also get files with headers and footers and details in them. Um, so I guess this is more geared towards your payment export files, but here we've just got a line type of detail. And if I go into field mapping, we are saying here that the date field in my file is mapped to the transaction date field in Business Central. Amount to statement amount and description to transaction text and you can do other things here so you can make a field optional or you can set up a transformation rule here as well if you wanted to so other things which BC has done is it's gone to my bank ledger and remember we assigned this bank statement import format against our Lloyd's bank account Therefore, if I go to my bank statement import format, it's set up Lloyd's here. So I can drill down and say select from full list. And here we can see the full detail behind the record. So it tells me the direction is import, 
the processing code unit is 1270 and here we're using the data exchange definition code of Lloyd's. And don't forget guys, we can set all of this up manually if we want to. It's just that I use the wizard because it was available to us and it makes life a little bit easier when we're setting up a data exchange definition for a bank statement import. So now that all that's configured, what I'm gonna quickly go ahead and do is just raise a new bank account reconciliation. Just search for the page here and I'm just going to quickly raise a new bank account reconciliation. So we'll do another video on this talking through in detail. But I've selected my Lloyd's bank account here. And I'm going to say bank and import bank statement. And what I'm going to do is just drag my sample bank statement across here. And what it's asking me here is it's picking up the date from the import um, for my statement date. I'm just going to say yes. And what we effectively have now is my transactions from my CSV file. You can see test transaction one through to four and the amounts here within my business central environment. And I can start matching those entries to so I can start matching those to my bank account ledger entries here on the right hand side. So I hope you found this video useful, guys. Uh, we will do another video on the bank account reconciliation module. And also, as I mentioned earlier, there are other ways that we can use data exchange definitions, i.e. for the payment export, for um, example, for a BAX file. Um, so a file that you can upload into your banking software after running your um, suggest vendor payments for your accounts payable ledger. Um, so we'll do other videos on those, but I hope you found this useful and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much.